So the first, we're going to go over the top three comments for draft. So at number three, we have Unquenchable Thirst. This is a generic and a blue for an enchantment aura enchanting creature. When it enters the battlefield, if you control a desert or there's a desert card in your graveyard, tap the enchanted creature. The enchanted creature does not untap during its color's untap step. So this these kind of effects, you know, this is Blue's way of removing creatures, um, powerful ability. Without a desert, without the desert clots, it's still pretty good. It won't will, it will, it won't be able to untap, so it takes away any creature uh, any creature opponent controls for only two mana. It's very good rate. If you control a desert, it taps it from the first place, so they won't be able to get another attack, which is fantastic rate. So this is a premium removal for blue. Now, I mean, I yeah. if you have a desert. This is a two mana claustrophobia, which yes. is insane. That's insane. That's very it's strong. It's so good. Very, very strong. Without desert, it does get significantly worse. I mean, it's still a good, good effect for two mana. For two mana, being able to force a creature to not untap, strong. But so long as you have a desert, premium removal at a premium cost. <clears throat> the um, up next is aerial guide. This is the second best common in blue. It's two generic and a blue for a. Drake 2-2 two, two flyer whenever it attacks and let a target attacking creature gains flying until end of the turn. So this is by itself it's a wind drake, three mana two two flying, which is very good stat line. I mean absolutely serviceable stat line. But it can also make another creature bring another creature up into the air and attacking. And it's super powerful. And it's every attack step too. So it's not it's not like it's an exert trigger where you have to exert the creature and then won't attack, then next turn you can do it again. Every single time you're attacking, you can bring another creature up into the air and deal damage with flying. This is going to close out games incredibly quickly in limited. Yeah. This card is similar to a card from M14 called Trained Condor, which was similar except the only difference was it was a 2-1 and that card was really powerful in limited. So, yeah, this this card is really solid. I mean, it's a straight upgrade from Trained Condor. You know, having two toughness in this format is actually extremely relevant since there's so many minus one, minus one counters running around um, from, you know, the previous Amon Kit, like, people are still going to get those and their pack, although I'll bite rare, a little rarer, um, it's still relevant. So having two toughness is important. So this is a straight upgrade to Train Condor, plus it's a Drake, which is an upgrade to being a bird. <laughs> so yeah, this card's amazing. It's a very aggressive card. Finally, the uh, we have unsummon. This is a blue for instant return power creature to its owner's hand. Uh, we've had un we have plenty of unsummon effects before, but generally speaking, except for the original unsummon, they've been at two mana or three mana with extra riders. Being at one mana instead is, uh, is a whole whole wholly more powerful than oh, just, yeah. just by reducing so much it by one mana. It's so much more efficient. And only leaving up one mana. Um, blow out combat tricks, deal with the opponent's creatures, protect your own creatures. It's very flexible at a very, very efficient cost. <clears throat> Glad to see it return. Um, yeah, how, how long has it been? M12? Somewhere around that. Yeah, it's been a it's while. It's been a long been a time. Since we had on summon in standard. Um, this is a very powerful effect. Now, since we're talking about limited purposes here, these are powerful cards. <laughs> But blue itself is an inherently weak color when it comes to Amon Kit block, only because the format is so fast, and blue just can't keep up. We had the Drake that we just talked about, which is a very aggressive card, but that's just one of, of many cards that are much slower <laughs> in blue. So uh, we'll have to see um, if blue can keep up the pace in the new draft format, but in a triple Amon Kit, blue was definitely the weakest of the five colors, mainly due to how aggressive the format was, and just blue could not keep up. All right, the first card we're going to be talking about for blue rares, uh, Champion of Wits. This is two generic and a blue for a two-one Naga Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you can draw. You may draw cards equal to its power. Then, if you do, discard two cards and eternalize for five generic blue blue. On the face, three mana two-one draw two discard two is meh, right? It's meh. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's it's two. You get two loots, which is all right. Mole Drifter, this is not. No, of course, absolutely not. Getting two loots is okay. And then when you eternalize it for seven mana, you get uh, two effectively two drops and two loots, which is much better, but you're also paying seven mana for that effect. This is um, this is so close to actually being good, but it's just basically, they just we just basically push down the power level enough that it's just very mediocre. Um, Honestly, I think if eternalize, if its eternalized cost was like six mana, I honestly could see this having standard play in a control deck, 
Um, well, when you're six because... mana, you compete with Torrential Gear Hulk. Yes, yes, but Torrential Gear Hulk doesn't essentially get you two cards plus, you know, an additional like two loots on top of that. Yeah, but oftentimes, um, but there's a lot of times you're going to be having Torrential Gear Hulk Flash. Which is very important. Bring back yeah, glimmer, to, glimmer of to, genius. To remove a creature or something along those lines. Or glimmer of genius happens a lot too. Scry two, draw two. It's also a very powerful effect. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, this yeah, is it is slow. fortunate that the cost is seven mana for eternal eyes. Right, it's just too slow. Too slow. I mean, because like, how how low of the eternal eyes cost does it have to be to actually see some kind of play? Five mana for a four four draw two loot two. Probably, maybe. At five mana, you'd play. Oh, at five mana, it's it would be ridiculous for that eternal ice. So the balance is tricky. Effect. The balance is tricky yeah. with these kind of effects. It would be it would be absurd at five mana. Right. Although this does showcase the kind of uh, flexibility that eternal ice is showing. I mean, uh, while well, when I first saw eternal ice, I was kind of kind of disappointed. There ran to be a lot of mega morph back in dragons of Tarkir, but um, by playing around with stuff that affect toughness and um, affect power, sorry. Or toughness, actually. Toughness or power. By playing around with that stuff and having riders that depend on those stat lines, you know, it does open up. There's a lot of uh, design space when it comes to Eternal Eyes. It's a very cool mechanic that Wizard has managed to do. It doesn't seem quite as uh, rehashed for, for what it seemed at first. But Champion of Wits, pretty mediocre. It gets better in draft, but even in draft, it's not that crazy of a high pick. You, you're going to pick removal over this for the most part. Uncommon or common removal. All right, up next is Countervailing Winds. Well, hello, Circular Logic. Eh, almost. So for two and a blue, almost, almost, there's a big difference. So for two and a blue, three CMC, you get an instant. Counter target spell, unless its controller pays one, for each card in your graveyard. It also has cycling two. Now, the main difference between this and Circular Logic, which was a standard all-star back in its day is that it has cycling instead of madness and that is extremely relevant because madness essentially allowed you to play this card for just one blue yeah one blue mana, and that's crazy good reducing it to one one blue makes this card so much more powerful however i will say this this card is still a decent counter spell especially if you're in a cycling style deck or cycling matters because you're going to have cards in your graveyard. It's going to be able to, um, it's you know, it's a soft counter effect. It's going to be that much more better, or sorry, that much better. Um, and it it does another thing that I like a lot in that in the late game, if you have enough counter spells, but you're digging for that, you know, for that threat, you're trying to find the, you know, because in control decks, you know, you obviously you play you play less. Uh, you have a lower threat density, so you have to find it. And this card does both. It's both um, a counter spell and a way of cycling through to find your threat. And both of those things line up very nicely. However, there's one big issue with a card like this. Counter spells just aren't that great right now. You have cards with Eternal Eyes, which you know, often are just a straight card disadvantage if you are to counter them. You have some cards that will have effect on cast, i.e. Ulamog, although with the Aetherworks Marvel ban, pro you're probably not going to see that card right. much. Um, but that's still relevant. There's less you want to counter, and a lot of the cards in aggressive decks that you want to counter, those Haymakers are at 2 CMC. And, you know, this is a 3-mana counterspell. This is a much different format that, than Circular Logic was in, and you know, having that advantage to make Circular Logic one mana with its madness was definitely relevant. I'm not too sure. I like this card a lot. Its design is very eloquent. Um, I think it slots into Circular... I'm not Circular Logic. I think it uh, uh, slots right into those uh, new perspective decks very well. Um, I'm not too sure if this will be good enough for just straight up blue control decks we'll have to see um but yeah it has a very nice design and you know with only one blue pip requirement um you can slot this in a lot easier than your other like cancel-esque effects 
into yeah, like uh, multicolor yeah, decks. It's far easily splashable. So if you're playing like trying to play a Grixis or an Esper control list, it's a much an easier card to cast than Disallow, which is the go-to counter at the moment. But it also competes with Disallow. So unless you're in a situation where you really desperately need to skimp on blue mana, this is kind of you know it's it's a card that's competing with a lot of other control spells, especially some counters. Another counter spell that we're gonna talk to, talk about later. Um. Yeah, I think it's just not quite there to make it. It's a powerful effect. It's a powerful effect. I won't, you know, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a soft counter that it most likely is going to be a hard counter when it comes to late game. And cycling means, you know, when there's a situation where you don't need the counter spell, you can just get rid of it. So that's always flexible. But yeah, it's just competing with too many cards. Yeah. The next card is Eternal of Harsh Truths. This is a 2 generic and a blue for a 1-3 zombie cleric with Afflict 2. And whenever Eternal of Harsh Truths attacks and isn't blocked, draw a card. So this is the first card we've seen with the Afflict keyword. So Afflict is means whenever this creature becomes blocked, the defending player loses X life where X is the Afflict cost, in this case 2. So a lot of the times these cards are designed so <laughs> block or beep or block or balk. Sorry, block or not block that you get some kind of benefit. So if it... If, your opponent blocks this card, you're still going to get 2 damage in, but if they don't block the card, which may, they may be discouraged to because they'll flick text, then you're going to be drawing a card. But they don't want you to draw a card, so they're probably going to block, which means they're taking 2. So, you see, we have a situation there when it comes to a flick. Um, the problem, though, is the stat line is just so bad <laughs> for 3 mana. It's a 1-3, which can be blocked by everything, pretty much. And if so long as you're, the blocking creature has 3 power... You're basically, all you're doing is throwing two damage to your opponent's face, which is so mediocre. You know, it's just so not worth the effect. I mean, if you can somehow sneak in a block, a sneak in attack, your opponent doesn't block, or your opponent somehow doesn't have a blocker good enough to block this, then you get a free draw out of it, which is great. You know, even if they don't have a good enough blocker, let's say they have a one four, right, which won't kill it, but it'll block it enough so it doesn't deal damage to draw a card. They take the afflict. You you feel like you got away with something, but in reality, it's not really that much of an impact, in my opinion. Yeah, it's not much of an impact. And as you mentioned, a, with a 1-3 stat line for 3 mana, how many times are you going to have the liberty to be attacking? There's just going to be other cards at the same mana cost that are just going to have such better stat lines that can block it and kill it. And that's that's my main turn away from this card is that there's a lot of times where you don't want to be attacking with a 1-3. So the Afflict is, seems, you know, it's most times it's not going to be absolutely that relevant. So both in both for limited and constructive purposes, this card is pretty, is not very good. Mainly because nope. due to its underpowered stat line. If somehow you draft like a Demir deck with a lot of removal, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but no, I, I do not think this card will be that great yeah maybe all right next up is fraying sanity and it is certainly doing that to my mind ah, two in a blue, three mana for an enchantment or a curse enchant player at the beginning of each end step enchanted player puts the top x cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard where x is the number of cards that were put into that graveyard from anywhere this turn so this card so Mill is um, a silly archetype. Mill is a silly archetype. Why kill your opponent from 20 when you can kill them from 60? Uh, my problem with this card is that unlike Sphinx's Tutelage... Was that the name of it? Sphinx's, Sphinx's Tutelage. Tutelage. Yeah, I'm the enchantment sure. from Origins. From Origins, yeah, from Origins. Is that Sphinx's Tutelage had a way of fueling itself in the sense that, you know, it procced off itself. Frank's Sanity does not do that. However, Fraying Sanity, um, the clause to get it to proc is very interesting. It, all it cares about is when a card goes to the graveyard. So that can be a removal spell. That could be something like a fetch land. It doesn't care. As long as the card gets to the graveyard, it's going to proc. Now, in standard, I'm not too sure what mill tools are available. Well, I mean, the biggest I'm... mill tool right now is the Mythic from Shadows of Innistrad. Uh... Ooh, the name is escaping me, but it's like Stream something. Nightmare, Never Ending Nightmare or something like that, where um, you can enchant a creature, and if it... No, it's a sorcery. Your opponent mills like 13 cards, and then you can... 
Oh, it it's wasn't, that flip it wasn't flashback. It's, it's that, fl it's that oh, flip right. card, isn't it? It flipped from your grave. Yeah, it's, it's flipped. A, it's a very weird card. It's, but it's a very flipped. unusual card. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look it up the name of that. But um, my problem with Fring Sanity is on a modern level. Now, blue black mill is kind of a, it is kind of like a tier four deck, I would say. It's kind of in the rushes, but it can put up results. It is powerful. Now, what worries me is the curve on this. You can play Fring Sanity turn three. Turn four, you can double Glimpse the Unthinkable. This card procs. That's 40 cards milled in a single turn. Uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable Whoa. is for, for blue-black. You know, target player puts the top 10 cards of their yeah, library in the yeah. graveyard. You use two of those with a Fring Sanity on the field. That's 40 cards into your opponent's graveyard. That's his, Chris, that's his magical Christmas tree land, though. That is really strong. Another thing that needs to be pointed out is that this this card works very well in multiples because, <laughs> you know, they're, they're going to proc off each other. Right. So if Rang Sanity, say the first trigger, puts five cards in the graveyard, that next one is going to proc off the, you know, the previous five that had to proc the first one plus the second and plus the first one's uh, proc. So that's 10 cards off the, that second one. So very powerful in multiples. Um, the, the part that you know I like a lot about this card is, once again, it doesn't have to be cards milled from the top of the graveyard to proc, just cards going to the graveyard. Um, so if opponent uses a fetch land, if you fatal push you know their creature, it's still going to get you towards your objective. And that is unsettling for me. I hate mill decks. I don't like them. Um, it's just generally speaking, it's a very uninteractive way to play magic, uh, where it's this kind of like stalling game, but you know, some people enjoy it, you know, it's very popular for some people. And I think this card has a lot of potential. Ooh. It's not the potential I want to see, but I think the power is there. I'll be surprised. Sure. If it, I'll be surprised if it sees play. That'll be, <laughs> I mean, interesting. I frankly don't want to see the play see play because like you, I don't like mill. I never liked Mill. Mill's always frustrating. It's never good, but when it does work, it just it's just annoying to have to. Deal it's just with. a very different axis of attack that most decks, you know, don't take. So you're generally not prepared for it. It's it just it's a very feel bad way of you know playing Magic. Whereas you know a lot a lot of people enjoy it just because you just watch your opponent put all their cards upside down. And it's like, yay. <laughs> yeah, good for you. And, you know, like, um, to be fair, like, the, uh, is it, like, uh, Sphinx's Tutelage decks back in Magic Origins? Uh, Michael Majors, I want to say, piloted one to a GP win. You know, those decks can be interesting, but this looks more like a blue-black variant um, in Modern, which is definitely not interesting. Uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable is... One of my most hated cards in modern. Well, dying to mill is an option, is an avenue of victory, but <laughs> we'll have to see. The next card is Hour of Eternity. So this is XX blue 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 for a sorcery. Exile X target creature card from your graveyard. For each card exiled this way, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a four four black zombie. So if we're exiling one creature card, this is essentially five mana. But if we're exiling two creature cards, suddenly we're at seven mana for eight eight stats. Three creature cards, six nine mana for uh, let me do the math nine mana for twelve twelve stats. So it ramps up in a way that's pretty powerful. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in many ways, it reminds me of Entreaty Angels. Obviously, nowhere near as strong as Entreaty Angels. But oh yeah, because it doesn't have that miracle effect, especially. Exactly. It's and plus it relies on having you know good it, enough yes, cards. Yes, it in relies graveyard. on having good enough cards in your graveyard. But it, you're always going to be able to get 4-4, four, four, no matter what kind of card it is, and you're going to be able to trigger any relevant end of the battlefield effects. For, yeah. I think for limited, this it's tough to evaluate. Triple blue and double X, that is a, that's a crazy That is hard. That card. is hard. I, seven, seven mana in limited is kind of like a sweet spot in the sense that it, we'll have to see how the format is because, like, as you mentioned, Amonkhet limited was very aggressive. It's kind of unrealistic to get your seven mana card off. Um, if this format's slower, seven mana, you get two four fours that may or may not have relevant text added on, which that's you know that's powerful. Um, 
And if obviously, if you can get this to, um, would it be 11? Is that the next time? Mm, would that be for the three? For Wait, no, it'd be nine. No, it'd, be nine, nine. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nine. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, I have to add by two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so at nine, you know, that's obviously extremely strong, but nine mana is just practical. Um, yeah, and limited, I, I think it could be okay. I still think it is, you know, a fairly low power rare, I want to say. I mean, like, it's unfortunate that it only targets your graveyard. If it could target both yeah. graveyards, it'd be much better. But even that would still, be more yeah. interesting for sure. Mm. Like how I would rate this card, I guess, is like this is a rare where I'd probably be picking uncommons over it, even if I was already heavily into blue. I'd still probably be more comfortable picking uncommons and commons. But you know, because at five mana, this card is not worth it in my opinion. It is a potential and build around, I think. It is a potential build around, and if you if you can get it off at seven, that's pretty powerful. I don't know. I I'm not too happy with this card though. If I were to pick it, well, this pick up this, pick up some self mill cards, dump some cards in the library, cast this, get some pretty powerful creatures. I mean, it does turn stuff that maybe. You did you that died during combat in earlier turns? Smaller creature, two twos, three threes. They come back as four fours, although that isn't. I mean, it's an upgrade, not crazy upgrade. It, but there's potential. I like this card. <laughs> it's the kind of effect I kind of like. It's a very cool effect, but also very slow, and the mana cost really hinders it a lot. Constructed, the mana cost is, and for constructed purposes, the mana cost is a killer. There's no way this is gonna make it. I think. I mean, the best thing you can do is flashing back like torrential gear hulks and the like. You know, in other gear hulks, I suppose, but Lord, that's it's not worth it. That's so slow. All right, next card is imaginary threats. So for two generic and blue blue, so four CMC, you get an instant. Creatures target opponent controls attack this turn if able. During that player's next untap step, creatures he or she controls don't untap, and cycling two. This is an interesting card. I think it is. Uh, I think it is very potent in limited. Uh, for limited, I think it's very potent because it basically forces. If you're in a board stall, which does happen a lot when it comes to limited and draft games, if you're in a board stall, you can force your opponent to have an unfavorable combat because everything has a swing. So you can choose. Then you're in control of what's happening in combat. Because you can then take out some important threat that maybe that your opponent was take, holding back, and and such, and then not only do the, you are having a favorable combat in your favor, then those creatures also don't untap the next step, so then you can swing in unhindered during your turn. You know, for so in board stall scenarios, this absolutely destroys any stalls and can, but I think it has potential to be absolutely a game ender, like back. Oh yeah, for sure. So. The thing I like most about this card is it really shows how powerful cycling is from a design perspective. This is a very situational card, although in limited board stalls do pop up a lot. This is a situational card nonetheless. However, it's okay to include this in your deck because if you don't want it, you can replace it for two generic. That is amazing. Yes, yeah, the amount of, yes. I mean, like just having cycling makes this card so much better. If they <clears throat> if they printed this card without cycling, I think this card would be unplayable. Um, no, it would I still think, be a powerful I think without, effect. I think without cycling, I still play this card. With cycling, just makes this card that much better. Because with cycling, yeah, it, then... makes, it makes that card a lot better. Um, yeah, like you said, you can use this, you know, defensively by um, taking advantage of them attacking to clear out some threats by making unfavorable blocks. You can also use it offensively in the sense that. You can force them to, you know, attack and tap all yeah, their potential down. blockers, and then you can go in for the kill. Right. Yeah, a lot of utility for this card. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in, the, in an aggressive format like this, it's especially helpful because you can go in for the swing, uh, tap down all your opponents, and then you don't have to worry about a crackback from your opponent that suddenly can surprise you with some com with some combat trick. It's definitely a powerful ability. I mean. If you're an experienced magic player, you're probably used to being cautious if blue has a bunch of open mana up. <laughs> but with a card like this, you should be even more cautious. If they have, you know, four mana up on your turn, be careful. You may need to play some blockers to have in case of the crackback. Expect shenanigans. 
Yeah, that's a good card. I like it. All right, next card is Jace's Defeat. This is a generic and a blue for an instant counter target blue spell. If it was a Jace Planeswalker spell, instead, well, not instead, plus Scry 2. Uh, and then once again, very narrow effect. Um, similar, it's basically the card in Theros. Uh, I forget what it was called, Gainsay or something like that, which was counter target blue spell for the same mana cost. But in this time, this time we have a Rider where in, if it was a Jace Walker spell, you also get the Scry 2. Yay. It's fighting with the spell, I think, which is the same slot that it's fighting for, and just the spell is just better. Yeah, absolutely. I can't. I mean, basically, the spells... I think you're. I think the card you're thinking of is negate. No, I'm thinking uh, of the spell. I really am. The negate, negate is is a wholly different from Jason's defeat because negate is, I think, leagues above them because like negate hits all planeswalkers and negate hits. Artifacts negate hits enchantments now. I mean, yeah, but dispel is one mana though. Dispel is one mana, but it uh, it occupies the same field in that Jace's defeat is basically only going to be countering pretty much counter spells, which dispel Fair does enough. handily. Jace's defeat hits turns out Gearhawks, I suppose, which is a bonus, but it's just I don't care enough. That's not this is not a card. This is too narrow. I'm just wasting cyborg slots if I'm going to bring this in. Um, cyborg slots that are much better served using as dispel or negate slots, which are just much better counter spells, situational counter spells. Something I think would have been interesting, since they do have split cards in the set, is that you know to have made these split cards, like where you have Jace's defeat slash you know like Chandra's defeat, for example, like on a card, that would be interesting. That would have a lot of sideboard playability. Um, the fact that these cards are by themselves. Makes them way too narrow. So, like, you like you cast one side, and then in the app, then the graveyard, you can cast the other side. Yeah, I mean, like, un- it's unfortunate that they're aftermath cards it, rather than like actual split cards. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I I would say. Oh, so so more like it would the be Ravnica it would be weird. Splits. More like the Ravnica yeah, more spells. like the Ravnica splits. Okay. An I an ideal situation. I but I understand that they only have aftermath card, aftermath split cards, which would make that weird. But it would be interesting to see cards like that. So yeah, this this is definitely too narrow of a card, too narrow for sideboard purposes. So I don't, I doubt this will see much play at all because of this how narrow the effect is. All right, next up is Kefnet's last word for four CMC. That's two generic blue blue. You get a sorcery. Gain control of target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Lands you control don't untap during your next untapped step. This is one of the better self-exert cards. However, it's still probably not good enough. Um, in limited, I think this card is really cool because you can once your opponent plays their bomb, you can take it, and you know suddenly you're not that worried about you know your lands untapping because yeah, you is, just took their best card. It is removal plus. Um. Yeah. But I just hate that your land's on top. That is such a killer. Uh, it it is a killer. And, you know, this is costed, like the upfront cost is the same as control magic, except it has the additional benefit of being a sorcery, not an enchantment. And you can hit artifacts and enchantments as well as creatures, unlike control magic. However, that, that additional clause of self-exerting yourself, you know, your land's not being able to untap, is huge that's big tempo loss i don't see this card seeing any constructed play but it's possible um it just really depends on the format I mean, the popular once again yeah it's a shame this does not hit planeswalkers yeah uh, true if it hit planeswalkers I'd, I'd like that a ton more because then you know you get to activate your abilities immediately and stuff like that mm-hmm. um i mean right now the popular blue archetypes in standard are team energy which this app does not slot into Team energy is far too aggressive, and um, then we have blue red control, which also does not slot into because one blue red control operates almost entirely in instant speed, so having a four mana sorcery does not jive, and two, it's just not worth casting, <laughs> just not worth it, uh, and uh, especially because for one more mana you get confiscation coup, which does not force your lands to be tapped the next turn, and does pretty much the exact same thing. You know, plus if you're taking something with uh, less than... What does it give you? Four energy? Is that right? Four energy. So I think. Yeah, plus if you're getting something with, you know, three power or less, you're netting energy. So that's nice. True. That's very much, yeah, ex- exactly. 
in, in modern, this card is not going to see play. Yeah. Next is Nimble Obstructionist. It is a two generic and a blue for a 3 1 bird wizard with flash, flying, and cycling. Two generic and a blue. When you cycle Nimble Obstructionist, counter target activated or trigger ability don't control. So it's a stifle effect on a flash flyer. This is very, this is interesting. So so oh, yeah. on the base side, we have a 3 mana 3 1 flash flyer, which is Vendillion Click, uh, <laughs> the base. But if you cycle it for three mana, you get to stifle an ability, plus you draw a card. Now, I wonder how useful a stifle is when you have to pay two more for it. Like, is drawing a card worth the extra two mana? Well, I think the question is more of, are there, you know, uh, activated or triggered abilities that are worth countering? And if the answer is yes, I think Nimble Obstructionist is a very good constructed card. Um, Mostly because... While obviously nowhere near the power level of Vendillion Click, this is still a 3-1 Flash Flyer, which can be pretty aggressive. Um, plus, control decks will love it because it has that additional utility added on. I th- I think this card has good chance. The only question is, will there be effects worth stifling? If the answer is yes, then this card will be amazing. Right now in Standard, the only effects that I really see worth stifling are effects such as uh, planeswalker ability is mainly ultimate. Um, in modern, you know, you can, if, if yeah. they didn't ban Aetherworks Marvel, you know that would this would be this would you know, have been a perfect. Good. This would have been a perfect card against Aetherworks Marvel. So in standard, maybe there could be a potential for uh, the white white blue flash deck to have a reemergence. I mean, this slots basically right into that kind of effect. It's a flying I, flash flyer. I don't. I don't think so. I think. Vendillion Click is too much competition. While Vendillion Click is a legendary, well, not in modern, in standard, because like the blue white flash. Oh, okay, deck sorry, was, I, was, I thought you were sorry. saying modern. Yeah, in, blue, in standard, the blue white de- flash deck was a pretty serious contender until it lost both Smuggler's Copter and um, Reflector Mage. Reflector's Mage, yeah. yeah. But this is a uh, this is exactly what the kind of game plan that Flash is trying to do, with having. Oh yeah. You know, keep your mana up, then flash in these flyers in the turn, and it's got the utility with the stifle effect. Can't stone rain lands like you can do in modern when your opponent tries to fetch. But... That is true. That is true. I think the cycle. I think the the stifle effect is just too expensive. I think at three mana, you do get a draw. But I just think that's a far expensive ability for an effect that's pretty narrow. Uh, so I'm a little bit down on this card. It's a fine card. It's fine. A flash three one flyer is nothing to scoff at. But I don't think it's gonna quite make as many waves as some people are expecting it to. You know, something that's interesting is that if your opponent goes for a Planeswalker ultimate, can't you stifle that? Yeah, that's pretty much the biggest thing you can do <laughs> with it. <laughs> That'd be pretty neat. That, that is pretty neat. I mean, also, we can disallow it, but this has the utility of also being able to put out a body. Yeah. All right, next up is Ominous Sphinx. For 5 CMC, that's 3 generic, blue, blue. You get a 4-4 four, four, uh, Sphinx at Uncommon. With flying, whenever you cycle or discard a card, target creature and opponent's control gets minus two, minus zero until end of turn. I picked this all day or day. Five mana four four flyer. Card is so stats. good. Great stats. With Absolutely. upside. With, so yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Five mana four four flyer with upside. Blue should not be getting creatures. It's good. <laughs> no, um, it really shouldn't. But you know what? I won't complain. Blue, blue. Didn't they? Didn't an almond kit? They get that uh I'm four mana four four, mana, four flyer. Four four flyer. At rare. Yeah. And it's cycled. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good. Player. What's up with that? I don't Such know. good rates. I don't know. So yeah, this is a great card. Um, and the right, the right now the blue black cycling deck in Amokin standard, uh, not standard, uh, and Amokin draft was kind of underpowered. This is not gonna change things, but if you have cycling cards, which you will have cycling cards, I guarantee you that it does inst- you get an incidental bonus where a tar- target creature suddenly gets smaller, um, allows for much more favorable blocks. Honestly, the, yeah. the second text is just kind of uh, the cherry on the top of the Sunday. The five mana four flyer is just fine enough on its own. I do think that second text is pretty relevant, though, because this card is hell to attack into if it's untapped. Because, you know, if your opponent has open mana, you know, if you if you go in for an attack, they can just cycle, since I'm pretty sure all cycling is at instant speed. You can cycle in at set. instant speed, yes. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure there's no cycling that's only at sorcery. No, there's no restriction. No, no, yeah, no. yeah, I'm fairly I'm fairly certain they're all instant speed. Is that you can cycle, and suddenly their card has you know minus four power. 
that's hell to attack into. You know, suddenly your combat, you, you can just dominate combat. Yeah, a dedicated, a dedicated cycling deck definitely has a lot of tools to play with, especially with Ominous Sphinx. That, that definitely helps combat a ton. It is a nightmare to attack into an untapped Sphinx and an untapped mana. <laughs> uh, constructed, it's uh, two um, uh, underpowered competing at the mana cost of different spells. If I'm in a 4-4 flying, it's just not the rate you're looking for in constructed formats. If, and yeah. that effect is also not as quite as potent as it is in limited. Next card, Riddle Form, one generic and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have Riddle Form become a 3-3 Sphinx creature with flying in addition to its other types until end of turn. And you can pay two generic and a blue with a scry one. This is a f okay card. Uh, problem is... The non-creature spell activation is kind of hard to come by in limited. You're going to be casting creatures over non-creatures most of the time. So you won't, I don't think, I think it might be, the activation is pretty unreliable. Having a scry one for two and a blue, repeatable, uh, is nice. Being able to scry every turn if you don't have anything to do is always nice to do. Put lands away in the bottom, bring gas to the front. But two generic and a blue is pretty expensive. So overall this is very... Eh, card. I don't know. If there's a blue red spells deck. Maybe there's a blue red spells deck that you can try to make work. Uh, there, the blue red spells deck wasn't really that good, and I'm okay. There really isn't much to do with it. So this card is. Um, I think it's very mediocre on common. Yeah, but a two a potential two mana three three flyer is also something not to scoff at. It's a potential three. Th yeah, but a lot of the times it's gonna they stay dead. I think you're gonna pay two mana for this guy. And then you think, okay, then I'll just get a non-creature. I'll just cast an instant or sorcery next turn. But then a lot of the times you're going to hold on to the instant sorcery because those are very, um, you know, situational cards. You're going to use them as removal or you're going to uh, combat tricks and stuff like that. So this, it's just not going to work That's fair out. enough. This is not going to work That's out. That's fair enough. Time. Yeah. But, and I, th I think yeah. in like a blue-red spells deck, you want more cards like uh, Thermo Alchemist as well as a red card that we'll see later on that you know you get that instant ping effect and it doesn't matter whether you're attacking or blocking you're going to get that damage in um so you know we'll you know, see actually, but i wasn't really i wasn't really thinking too much about a dedicated blue red spells like in standard this could be interesting in standard uh this, the problem is the burns are so bad right now in standard yeah yeah when you print lightning bolts at three mana you know yeah yeah so yeah probably in standard it's just not going to see much play either because the blue red spell stack just doesn't have enough efficient burn to make it useful we'll see but you know a two mana three three flyer it would be a miss to say that's not worth of keeping an not. eye out of course all right next up is sinuous striker it is a three cmc for two and a blue you get a creature naga warrior at uncommon, 2-2 two, two in stats, and for blue, it gets plus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. It also has Eternalize for 5 mana, 3 generic blue, blue. Discard a card, it comes back as a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, water Corsure, this is not. Well, I mean, those kind of effects are deceptively very strong. Obviously, the fact that it only has 2 toughness means you can only activate it once on the face. Yeah. But bringing it, back, bringing it back as a 4-4 four, four with that same ability for 1 blue is very powerful. That is true. It is powerful. It's almost akin to a card called a uh, Aetherling, although you're, you're much less, you know, you're much less limited in options than Aetherling has. Um, but it's kind of a similar stat line. I I don't know how I feel about this card. I like Water Courser was definitely playable, but Water Courser had an additional toughness. This does have Eternalize. You're not getting card advantage because you're having to discard a card. But on the other hand, you know, you know, late mid game or late game and limited, you can throw away an extra land you don't need to get that four four. In which case, this is extremely powerful. Um, I think, I think this card, like if I were to pick it, I would be fine with it. Right. <sighs> the fact that it's uncommon means you're probably there's going to be a lot of competition. And that's, there's definitely some very power on commons. This is more like mm -hmm. comparable to a lot more commons of the set, for sure. But it, I, I like the idea of having a 4 4 with these. Oh, yeah, the with text. Water Courser text is really good. I mean, the Eternalized part is amazing, don't get me wrong. 
the problem is the front side, you know, the first half of it. Right, right. Being a three mana two two with a water courser building. Yeah, so so and as, yeah, paying for that front side. Yeah, paying for that front side is probably just not worth it for the eventual upside in the Only getting one activation is so bad because with Water Courser your you know, your opponent does have to consider the fact that it could potentially become a four one out of nowhere. That tra or... trades up crazy. Or become a zero. Well, no, wait, no. It can only get plus. It can one. only. It can only go. Plus yeah, it can only one get plus one. 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 But but yeah. that trades up very well. You know. Yes. <clears throat> standard is is zero play. Absolutely zero play. This does nothing, in standard. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Next is we have striped river winder, six generic and a blue for a five five serpent with hex proof and cycling for a blue. Uh, this is um so this is a common well it was th I threw with this in here because you know living end exists <laughs> and they like their cycling cars. Yeah, I mean most living end decks right now like are more Jund variants where they're green, black, red, but there have been Grixis variants in the past. So you know this could be pretty good in those variants. It does have it does meet the criterion of its cycling costs only being one mana. And it is a very relevant body when living in goes off. You know, 5-5 five, five Hexproof is nothing to scoff at. So, it's potential. It, it's also fairly good in Popper as well. A uh, 5-5 five, five Hexproof is a nightmare to deal with. There's almost nothing that kills it outside of Edith effects, and that's only in black. Yeah. And it does have a very nice curve. Like, if you were to build, like, a Demir deck in Popper, where you can cycle this turn one and then exhume it turn two. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's that's pretty strong. We'll have to see. Popper, I mean, I, a deceptively powerful I, format, <laughs> having reanimator effects and such. And you know, Delver of Secrets. Delver of you Secrets, know. yeah. Good old Delver, popular in any format. Cycling is a, such a such a clean, nice mechanic. I, I I'm glad they brought this. Oh, back I love cycling. Yet. And yeah, hopefully, cycling. we see it more yeah. more in the future. I I wish they made it evergreen, but I think they wanna keep cycling they don't want to have cycling all the time which i can understand having cycling all the time would probably make probably make the format too homogenous you know being able yeah. to filter that easily every single time interesting card uh five foot hexproof definitely nothing to scoff at all right next up we have supreme will it is three cmc for two and a blue you get an instant out of uncommon choose one counter target spell unless its controller pays three or Look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And I like this card. It's a Once again, this is a rough set for counter spells with the fact that you have Eternalize in, in the set, as well as in standard in general, counter spells are not really in that great of a place. Um, however, this thing does. Two things I like about counter spells, like uh, as we had seen with prevailing winds, in the sense that, you know, late game when you need to dig for that threat, you know, you don't have just like a useless counter spell in hand. You actually have something that can find you a powerful card. So this card is essentially mana leak and impulse tacked on, with the downside if you have to pay one mana to cast either. And. It is true, Mana Leak is pretty bad at 3 mana, Impulse is pretty bad at 3 mana, but I do like having the flexibility, I think that is powerful in its own. Yeah, the flexibility is worth the extra mana. Uh, I, I love, people seem to be crazy about this card, it's definitely a strong card because of its flexibility, it being able to Impulse at the end of turn when the counter is dead is powerful, but I, I personally think this card is not as useful in the current standard environment because i think because end of turn just impulsing for three is just like meh uh yeah but i mean i agree with you the impulse you're not you're not too like this card is strange because you're not too happy casting either sides of it you know it's an inferior um it's an inter inferior mana leak and it's an inferior impulse However, the fact that this card is always alive is what is interesting to me in the sense, uh, I mean, for a counter spell, is this card is never a dead card, provided you have the mana to ca cast it. However, once again, counter spells are in a rough place in this standard. Well, I, it's, it's never a dead card. I don't but know. If, it's never a dead card, but, if, uh, but I think when you have a counter spell sitting in your hand, 
that doesn't actually counter something and you're just using it to impulse for three mana. It just, I feel like you just you wasted that slot. You wasted that card. So it's not a total waste because you're digging four deep to get a card, which is powerful effect. But uh, it's it's the kind of toolbox effect that I don't think we the control decks necessarily need. But definitely um, allows a lot of flexibility and also allows for more splashing of blue rather than being dedicated to blue, which currently mana base and standard right now are very tricky when it comes to that. All right, next card we have is Swarm Intelligence. It's a six generic and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. What a silly card! So this is an EDH card. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much strictly, uh, in limited this is sucks and in standard it sucks. I mean, I'm sure somebody's gonna want to try it in in constructed to copy all their instants and stuff. But in, it, it's just too slow. Seven mana for enchantment. Just get out of here. You're, gonna, you're not going to be spending that much. In, if you're going to spend that much on enchantment, you're going to die the next turn. I guarantee you. I guarantee you that. Unless your opponent is also playing Swarm Intelligence. If you play Swarm Intelligence, your opponent plays Swarm Intelligence, and I don't know what kind of format you're playing at all. Yeah, this card is far too slow to have any impact. In any form. Seven mana, do nothing enchantment. The turn comes into play. All right, let's move on. Then. All right. Next up is Tragic Lesson. For two and a blue, you get an instant at common. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. This is interesting. This is a very interesting card. It's similar to Brainstorm, but it's at instant speed. And the, I'm using air quotes here, downside <laughs> is that you have to return a land you control or discard another card. Now, we still have some tools you know, from Shadows and Eldritch Moon uh, with Madness, where that discard may not be a downside. We also have a, some utility lands, i.e. Aether Hub. You know, you can get back, you know, to get additional energy. Um, there are a few other utility lands as well. You know, that's, that's not exactly a downside. And if you're playing a deck that doesn't really have too much curve above four mana, you know getting a land back really isn't that big of a deal you know i i like this card it's a fairly I, it's a fairly powerful draw card for an instant yeah. speed it's an instant divination with a downside that is pretty negligible you can either madness it, manage the card like i said or if you do pick up a land that's not too bad especially in the late game uh when you when you have a surplus of lands in the kind of control deck that is going to want to run this card unfortunately i mean it's just so close to being playable it's just that it's just getting pushed out by all the better draw spells in the format uh glimmer of genius uh illumination and uh pull from tomorrow are just edging out this card this card is very close very close to being playable but this is better draw at the moment but it's yeah. neat ability neat card I, th I think in limited, you know, you're you're pretty solid. Neat card is a very solid pick. It's not crazy. Yep. I draw spells are always powerful, but I tend to pick them kind of lower because, uh, generally speaking, I'd rather have a playable creature. It, it's tempo creature. loss. Play yeah, tempo loss. You want a playable creature, a playable uh, removal. But this is uh, this is a, one of the better draw spells for sure. This is a powerful effect. <clears throat> okay, next card, Unesh, Cryosphinx, Sovereign. Four generic blue blue for legendary creature Sphinx. Four four flyer Sphinx spells you cast cost two less to cast whenever Unish or another Sphinx enters the battlefield under your control. Reveal the top four cards of your library and an opponent separates those cards into two piles, put one into your hand, the other into your graveyard. So every time you cast a Sphinx, you get a small factor fiction. That's cool. That's a very cool effect. Uh, factor fiction itself is a very no. neat ability. Okay, I know, I know. The the for when it comes to constructive purposes, it's just too slow. Paying six mana for a four four flyer, even though you do get card advantage, it's the kind of effect that's way too slow for constructed. In limited, it's fine. Six mana four four flyer is undercosted, but you also get that factor fiction effect, which is powerful. I don't know how many times you're gonna get your sphinxes to ca get cost cast cheaper because sphinxes are generally. Um, rare or uncommon but you know more power to you if you get that out that's even more gravy on top of it and then um, those sphinxes then also get another factor fiction for you it's not the fact factor, factor fiction gets five but not one factor fiction type effect you know yeah i don't know i mean having a legendary sphinx there's so much they could have done with this card uh, yeah it is like from a vorthos standpoint this card hurts me a little bit because Sphinxes are generally, like, solitary 
creatures. You know, this guy is, you know, a tribal kind of lord who encourages playing multiple sphinxes. I don't really care for that. And in Commander, you don't want the sphinx as a commander because sphinxes tend to inhabit the, you know, primarily the esper uh, sphere, you know, the blue, white, black. So there's some sphinxes you don't get access to if you play this guy as a commander. Yeah, you don't want to play this as a commander, but he's very good in the 99. Which is, I, I'm just a little bit sad that, you know, had they made this guy a Zorius, he would be a much better Sphinx commander. I, I d highly doubt they could have made this guy Esper, since, you know, Grixis' support was already kind of stretching it. But there's there's a lot of missed potential when I look at this card. Well, I know I'm going to love being able to cast a fact of fiction and drive out. It's not going to happen much because it's a mythic rare, but when I do get to do it, oh, that's going to be sweet. Uh, standard, like I said, too expensive. Uh, these kind of effects, while while sweet, there's not really much you can do because like you can try to manipulate the factor fictions um, by having some kind of reanimator effects, putting something big in the yard, and having a reanimator effect in hand because your opponent is kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't kind of situation. But right now the reanimator effects are just I mean what I don't think there's any good reanimator effects that are under like five mana right now in standard. So yeah, that's kind of that kind of dream is kind of dead. But it's a cool card. I like uh, it's interesting. Better, better as it's always. But what are we gonna do? Yeah. All right. Next up is Vizier of the Anointed. It is four CMC, three generic, one blue for a creature, human, cleric, and uncommon. Two four stats. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature with Eternalize or Embalm. Put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Whenever you activate an Eternalize or a Bomb ability, draw a card. I like this guy. This guy is so neat. Because, like, although you're putting the Embalm or Eternalize card into your graveyard, that's kind of card advantage. Um, there are some Eternalize cards that, you know, have a cost of discarding, in which case that's not card advantage. But this is really neat, you know, for a 4-mana 2-4, which is not a terrible stat find. You're also getting a tutor effect tacked on. And if you do get an Eternalize or Embalm triggered while he's on the battlefield, you get an additional card. I think this guy's really neat. I this like is, This is a very nice card for limited. Uh, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a lot of a lot of extra card value. It's a tutor. You can tutor for the Embalm creature you want or just the one Embalm creature you probably have. Uh, then when you Embalm it, you get another card. That's great. Um if we're, obviously that's just great in, in limited standard they're just I don't think there's just any bomb or eternal creatures that's worth it to cast it right now yeah I mean if if there ever is an eternalize or embalmed deck in standard this guy will really see, will see a ton of play this guy will be very good for it yeah definitely for that deck uh, yeah. it's just unfortunate that embalm and eternalize has been pretty underpowered when it comes to constructive playability the effect is just uh, generally speaking not worth it which is a shame for our effect, kind of like flash, for like pseudo flashbacks, flashback for creatures. You know, it's a powerful effect, but just that the, the stats are just not there. The, uh, the yeah. abilities are not there. That's fair enough. But yeah, unlimited. I love this guy. Unlimited he's he's definitely situational. You're gonna have to build your deck a specific way if you look to pick up. But it's not hard to but, get an embalm or internalized creature. Yeah, you're gonna be picking internalized. True. You're gonna be picking internalized and embalm creatures highly because they are internalized and embalm creatures. They're just inherently much more better than any other creature because you can cast them twice which is always useful that's always powerful so this is the uh final blue card we'll now be going on to black i forgot the order for a second there <laughs> 